Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. So I was looking inside this, which I'll start calling the Project Idea Box, looking for some shapes for a quick little project, something to stretch my creative muscles and start the year with the right foot. And of course, I found a ton of great stuff inside it, including a piece that I've been saving for more than a decade, this beautiful transparent plastic dome. Now, you guys already know what I've built from the thumbnail of the video, so right here I'll show you how I got there. The first thing I did was to try and remove some unwanted features from this white ring piece, which I found on a dumpster last year. I tried scoring the plastic with a snap knife and breaking the pieces, like I do with the styrene, but this plastic was much stronger than I expected. So the solution, of course, was to break out my Dremel. Now, using a Dremel to cut big chunks of plastic is really scary. So I probably forgot that this was even an option. And I decided to actually just slice the big chunks into smaller segments and keep going slow with the snap knife. Snap knives are very dangerous, I believe even worse than a Dremel tool. So yeah, be careful, guys. Then came the first 3D part of this project, and I'll keep a list of all 3D printed parts in the end of the video so you guys can check all of them out on my Patreon page. But yeah, I used a ton of 3D parts in this project. Now, sometimes I get some comments saying why not print the whole thing, and what they're usually missing is the fact that this combination of shapes and 3D printed pieces is part of a creative process, meaning I used the recycled parts to have ideas that are then augmented by the 3D printing pieces and vice versa. I could not print the whole thing because the thing is being created. It's a fully manual process. And this is important to say because even to me, when I'm looking at the video and I'm editing the video as I am right now, as I'm talking to you guys, sometimes it's, it's, it looks kind of dumb to, to cover all of the pieces with some 3D printing parts. But yeah, the creative process is confusing. It should be like that. But let me get back to what I'm doing right there. Yeah, I'm working on the body of this four-legged mech. And different from most of my builds, this one has an inside. Most of my builds, I just make like a box, which is the mech. But this one, this one will have like an inside where the plant will be living. And for that, I'm choosing some pieces that might look good, like this white one, which I believe is like a sewing needle holder, but I might be wrong about that. But yeah, all of that will be visible, so yeah, it needs to look cool. And here's another example of what I told you guys before about the creative process. I chose the white piece for all of its tiny little details, but I had to cover the middle of it, because yeah, the plant will be sitting right there, so it needs uh, some extra stuff on the top of it. And this is all to show you guys how chaotic the creative process can be. I'll sometimes make some choices that I have to remove, later on the build and yeah all of this back and forth is to be expected and to be honest i think this is what makes the whole thing much more interesting now right here i had to cover a hole on the bottom of the unit and for that i decided to break out a tool that i don't really use that often on the channel this cutting compass right here I'll be honest, it is not that useful for a thicker material like 2 or 3 millimeters tiring, but for this 1 millimeter right there, it worked super well. Of course, as you can see right there, I had to use the snap knife to kind of retrace the cut from the cutting compass, but it worked great. And pretty quickly I had the that hole right there on the bottom of the back covered up by this one millimeter piece of styrene. Using a cool looking shape like a gribbly for my collection could be an option but I couldn't find something for that spot right there on the right side. And as I was working on the bottom I decided to actually go and find some tiny little shapes to cover a couple of extra holes on the initial shape. 
Then I grabbed some thin laser cut acrylic discs. I believe this is also one millimeter thick. Because I needed to make an attachment point for the plant that will come later on. Probably on the second and last episode of this series. To make my life easier on the painting process, I'll keep the plant separated from the Mac. And to make this quick attachment point, of course, I'll use some fake Lego pieces. My preferred method of attaching small structures. It was glued in place with some CA glue and then some baking soda to reinforce the joint. And of course the matching Lego piece comes on top of that and I'll glue it to the bottom of the plant. Now how I'm gonna make the plant is still a mystery to me. I'm thinking maybe epoxy putty but I'll decide on that later. But for now I wanted to hear your thoughts on this, how I should make this plant, the technique I should use to create this organic shape, so yeah. Let me know in the comments. And what you see right there is an extra piece to go on the top of the plastic dump because I, I think it kind of looks ugly without anything on top. So yeah, I'm making an extra attachment piece to go on the top of the plastic dump to give it like a finishing touch. As you can see, I was extra careful because I was super worried that this plastic was going to crack when I was drilling it. But yeah, everything went well. It was then time to apply the first coat of primer to see how things were going. I got this weird effect on the bottom, uh, which I kind of love to be honest. But yeah, with that, the body was pretty much done. And the next thing I need to work on, of course, are the legs. This thing needs to move around. Now, I wasn't thinking of making anything super complex for the legs, but still I needed to test some ideas. Not much in terms of geometry, but mostly in terms of size, how big the legs should be. If I went with super bulky and complex legs, the thing would look kind of menace. If I went with some tiny little legs, the thing would look kind of fun and cute. Also, the challenge when it comes to making multiple pieces of the same design, like the four legs of this project, is finding copies when it comes to parts and gribbly. So what I decided to do on this particular case for this project was to look for pieces where I could find like at least four of them and then make some 3D printed pieces that matched the size of the gribblies. And this is why it is super important to keep your shapes and parts organized. There's no way you find multiples of the same piece if things are messy. Now, I'll be honest, it took me a lot of time to model and print all of these pieces, especially because there are four legs in this project. But I'm sure all of that will be useful, not only for this build, but for future projects. And I'll make all of the SL files available for my patrons on the Combat Robot tier. So yeah, if you want to help keeping the lights on right here, please check the links on the description box. But yeah, with all of the leg parts selected and printed, it was only a matter of putting everything together. And of course, repeating the same process three more times. Now, for this particular project, I'm not going for a complex, menacing look. So yeah, the design of this Mac is kind of more towards the fun and, 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 and cute look. So putting the legs together wasn't like a super complex process as sometimes it is right here on this channel. To be honest, after the initial hustle to model and print each of those pieces, putting the legs together was actually a very fun process. Now, right here I have a quick tip that might be useful for you guys. So I had the challenge of drilling a hole through this plastic bit. And as you can see right there, I was trying to, to drill it by holding it with my hands, which is not ideal. I could really hurt my fingers right there. And this solution was pretty simple. I just glued the bit on a piece of metal on a piece of wood. And that was enough to keep everything in place and safely drill the hole that I needed on that tough plastic bead right there. 
with the hole properly done, the plastic bit was glued on the end of that length segment right there. This orange plastic bit is kind of the ankle of the robot and so the foot will be of course attached to it. And to kind of reinforce the ankle I drilled a hole through the whole thing and put a plastic rod right in the middle that will keep everything together. I always try as best as I can to avoid having to use supports on my prints. It is much easier to print the pieces separated into smaller segments and then glue them together with some CA glue, like I'm doing right there. And that round piece right there is the foot of the robot and it precisely connects to the ankle, to the plastic bow bead. After like an hour of work, I made all four lower leg segments and it was time to move to the next one. I did the same thing to the upper leg segment. It is a combination of 3D printed parts and some recycled shapes. So it was just a matter of putting everything together with some CA glue, using of course the best of each world. Like the printed parts of course have some print lines and that is not the case with the recycled pieces. And so by combining these two types of shapes together, you can kind of avoid having to sand by hand all of the pieces. The design of this upper leg segment is much simpler than the lower one, so yeah, everything came together much quicker. Then it was just a matter of adding an axle on the body of the mech, like I'm doing right there, and the robot was ready to stand on its own. But before I show you guys that, I wanted to add like a battery pack on the outside of the robot. So I went in my collection of parts and I found this one right here, which looks super cool. I've opened it and removed some unwanted features. Then I sanded the edges of the pieces to increase the surface area and glue it shut back together in a much more precise way. Then I added some details on the surface. And then I closed the holes on the front and on the back using some tiny little laser cut discs. Now the plastic on this gray shape right there is kind of immune to CA glue, so every time I glued something to it, I kind of did some light sanding to increase the surface area. The last touch was this piece right here, which will connect the tank to the body of the robot. To make that connection, I'll use a simple plastic rod. So of course I had to mark the surface of the robot to know precisely what I wanted the hole to be. Then I drilled as careful as possible the hole right there and the connection is pretty simple. The pieces will be glued together after the painting process. And here's the result, the robot with the four legs and the battery pack. Now it is missing something, isn't it? Like a tiny little arm like all my models have. So let's make it. The best way to make some articulator arms Wi-Fi antennas. One extra 3D printer part on the very tip of the arm and these amazing claws. I've been saving these for a long time and I'm glad I was able to find a project for it. It is super delicate, I'm not a big fan of delicate things, but yeah, this looks amazing. A couple of extra details here and there just because the Griblies kind of wanted to go together. And this grabbing arm was pretty much done. And it is a 
attached in the same way to the body of the robot. A matching hole on the ring right there, carefully made. And the pieces go perfectly together. And of course, they will be glued after the painting process. Now let's put the final coat of primer on the thing. And this is the result. When I began this build, I was thinking of a simple single video project. But I gotta stop lying to myself, it really never is. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the second and the last episode of this quick little series. When I make the plant that lives inside this robot and a cool looking diorama to tell a nice story about it. There's many ways you can support this channel including being a patron on the Combat Robot here to have access to all of the STL files included in this build. You can also check my Amazon wishlist where I keep all of the consumables I use on a daily basis. And you can also of course subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment because that helps a ton. And as always, thanks for watching.